we welcome you to today's broadcast where the blessings of the Lord is preached and taught. We ask that you share today's message with someone through social media so that you can be a blessing to others. Today's sermon title is The Power of an Idea, taught by our master teacher, the anointed and appointed Apostle Jeremiah Cummings. God bless all of you again today. I am so so excited about all the revelation that God has been given on this on this week. I mean, it's just been phenomenal, and I am so thankful um, for our ambassadors. We have uh, Ambassador Joe Thomas and Ambassador Steve Thomas down in Jackson, Mississippi, who actually helped me uh, with with the idea of the power of an idea. You know, because. Um, she told me, Ambassador Thomas told me her vision for um, Helping Hands Restoration. And when they feed the hungry, they clothe the naked, they do the work of Christ. And she got a building now, and, and uh, we're sending clothes down there. And, and she said, well, you know, I would, like for, I would like for us to have a website, you know. And so I said, what's the name of it? She said, Helping Hands Restoration. So in my mind... I saw this hand reaching down to lift up somebody that was homeless or hungry. And, uh, and so I found the image and I sent it to her. And when she saw it, she said, that's it. That's it. And we have gone through the process of building Helping Hands Restoration, uh, Restorations.com. Powerful website. They're doing a powerful work. Amen. I'm going to give you more information about that. But when I looked at it, I saw the power of an idea. Amen. And, and basically, when I began to study the power of an idea, I had to reflect back on my own life. And the ideas and the thoughts that I had growing up, you know, of uh, doing the things that I have done in life. And, and even doing this broadcast and and coming to you, and I want to talk to you about the power of an idea. First of all, listen to me. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirits are not visible. The only time you can see a spirit is when it's in somebody. Even the devil is a spirit. And the only time you can see the devil is when that spirit has a, a body to work in. Amen. Amen. So now, the Bible tells us, and I just looked it up, in Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 9, he said, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if any man have not the spirit of Christ, now, when you have the spirit of Christ, you got his attributes. You got his mind. You got his thoughts. You got his power. You got his wisdom. Amen. Because you're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. And the Bible also tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen to me. So I want you to get this because I'm telling you, this is a long lesson that I'm going to do in 30 minutes and come back on Thursday and pick it up. The power of an idea. God tells us how to think. Amen. And when God tells you how to think and you act on those thoughts, those thoughts take on power on his own. <laughs> oh my God. And bring back to you everything that you send it out to. It's almost like Isaiah 55 and verse number 11. So shall my word be that shall go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereto I send it. So when you speak a word, your thoughts, amen, take on a power of its own. And they go out, amen and amen. It's almost like angels. They go out and they bring back to you everything that you think right. Amen. I don't think, you know, I, I was watching a commercial on television and they were playing our song, Wake Up Everybody. And at the end they said, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. 
Amen. Amen. When you can have, when God actually tells us how we should think. Listen to Philippians chapter number 8. I'm going somewhere. This is, I mean, I could do this for a whole month. Listen to me. God, come on, say, God tells me how to think. I'm going to think what, I'm going to think like God told me to think. Amen. And then, and then, and then God tells us, as a man thinketh, back in Proverbs chapter number 23 and verse number 7, he said, as a man thinketh in his heart, in his consciousness, in his mind, so is he. So as a man uh, thinks, and then another scripture, I want you, I want to walk with y'all, amen, because I want to get back to the vision that we had for HelpingHandsRestorations.com and what is being done in Jackson, Mississippi. But I want to tell you, uh, Ambassador Thomas and Ambassador um, Steve, uh, Steve Thomas, that vision is just, it's not just for Jackson, that's a vision that is going to go throughout the United States, United States, and go throughout the world. And I want y'all to go there. You get a chance, I want you to go to HelpingHandsRestorations.com and look at the image that God gave us as a, a, as a label or as a brand for that website. Amen. And look at the things that are being done down in Jackson, Mississippi that started with an idea, the power of an idea. And God will do things in your life, good God Almighty, based on your idea. Because according to Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 7, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Man is a result. Of what he thinks. You think you're broke? you broke. You think you're rich? <laughs> you're rich. You think you're sick? I feel like I'm getting sick. You get sick. Amen. The power of a thought is so powerful. And I want to go somewhere. And God tells us how we should think. He says in Proverbs, I'm sorry, in, in, in Philippians chapter number 4, and verse number 8, Amplified Translation. Finally, believers. He said, finally, believers. First of all, you have to be a believer. First of all, you have to be a believer in truth, in Christ, in God, in the kingdom of God. In order to see the kingdom of God, you have to believe in the kingdom of God. The Bible says in John chapter number 3 and verse number 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen and amen. So if you're born again, if you have the spirit of Christ dwelling within you, at some point you'll raise up and you'll begin to see the kingdom of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God. And you'll begin to see your own potential. That you can think a thing as a man thinketh. He is the manifestation and he make and he and um he uh, manifest what he thinks. Albert Einstein was asked the question, what is wrong with man? You know, and Albert Einstein is called a genius. You know, he's that great scientist, Albert Einstein. And he was asked the question, what is wrong with man? He said, man has to learn how to think. Amen, amen. And God tells us how to think. Y'all stay with me because I'm going somewhere. This is such an important message. Amen. And God wants to change the way you think and then tells you, you know, the idea that you have in your head. Amen. If you meditate on that idea day and night, like, come on, just like you meditate on the word of God day and night. He said, you be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. And whatsoever you do will prosper, will be success. It's based on how you think. My God. You know, we did a song of where I watched Teddy McFadden and Whitehead. Some of you know them from Ain't No Stopping Us Now. But I was in the studio with them, and, and they were doing this song. And I said, what's the name of this song? And, and, uh, and Gene McFadden said, the name of this song is called I Can't Win for Losing. I said, that's a bad title. I said, no. And then they gave it to Teddy. If you, if you Google him, you'll see Teddy Pendergrass, I Can't Win for Losing. And then, you know, I said, that's not a good song. 
You know, because you say that. And some people still say that. Man, what's happening? Man, I can't win for losing. That's a terrible thing to say. That's a terrible thing to think. No, I am more than a conqueror through Christ. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's how you think. So when, so what Philip, Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 8 says, Finally, believers, think on these things. Things. Then it said, whatsoever thing is the truth. Amen. Think on truth. God's word is truth. Amen. Amen. Whatsoever things are honorable and worthy and respectful. Whatsoever things are right and confirmed by the word of God. It tells you how to think. Whatsoever is pure and wholesome. Amen. Pure thought. Whatsoever things is lo lovely and brings peace. Amen. Whatsoever things are admirable. Amen. And of good report. If there be any, any excellence, if there be any worthy of praise, anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Now, let's, let's talk about the first part. It said, believers, think on the things that are true. Amen. Amen. Think on the things that are true. Well, let me tell you. That you can have perfect peace. And it don't just mean a state of mind and calm. No. When the word peace is mentioned in the Hebrew language. As it is mentioned in the book of Isaiah. Chapter number 26 and verse number 3. It said, Thou will, you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind, whose thought is stayed on you. Amen. Stayed on my word. Stayed on the word of God. My mind, my thoughts, I have perfect peace. That's why I thank God for Isaiah 54 and verse number 17. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment is condemned. Think on that when you come under attack. Amen. I've been giving you, my God, my God, I could give you a whole lot today because I'm just getting started. I could give you um, uh, Proverbs again. Over and over and over again. Proverbs, we're living in a disastrous time. We're living in a chaotic time. We're living in what they call the coronavirus. It's no more than a picture of the death angel coming through. Amen. And now, sad to say, nearly 200,000 people have been affected. Somebody said, well, God wouldn't do that. If you look in the Bible, whenever a nation... Uh, became dis, uh, the dissatisfaction of God, turned away from God. I always said one of the biggest mistakes and one of the biggest tragedies that this country committed, it was a whole lot of them that this country committed. Amen, amen. I mean, it's a whole lot of tragedies. But when an atheist named Madeline O'Hara out of Austin, Texas, amen, petitioned Congress to remove prayer from the school. It's almost like, okay, you remove prayer from the school, you remove God from the school, good God Almighty, and you let Satan in the school. It was a tragedy. And ever since 1962, it's been getting worse and worse. And now it has reached a peak and brought us to what the Bible calls the end of an age. But the end of an age is the beginning of the kingdom of God being manifested. And people of the kingdom are coming up. Amen. Black and white and Hispanics and, you know, uh, Asians, you know. And they're all saying now, Black Lives Matter. Sports. Amen. Sports is not the same. Maybe they let a few thousand people in a, in a stadium that seats 80,000 people, but that has changed. And now the players are now standing up for equality. God is a God of equality. He is, this is what the Bible said, He is not a respecter of persons. He is a God of equality. He, cre he said, all souls are mine. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. He said, all souls are mine. 
Amen. Whether they're black or white or Hispanic or Japanese, Chinese, whatever they are, Asian, they all belong to God. Good God Almighty. Songs. Come on, y'all. I ain't even got there yet. I got to share this with you. Remember, we're living in what Daniel 12 and 1 says, a time of trouble since there was a nation, but the children of the kingdom are present. The children of God are present. And once you understand the power of your thoughts, my God, how your thoughts are energized and how your thoughts pick up power and your thoughts bring to you. Amen. That's what it means. As a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. He is the sum total his character is the sum total of his thoughts. Amen. The Bible says, have the God kind of faith. Amen. Your Bible says in King James, um, have faith in God. But in the Hebrew language, that has the God kind of faith. If you're going to have the God kind of faith, you got to have the God kind of thoughts. And that's what the Holy Ghost comes to bring us. Amen. The Holy Ghost... When I went to Jerusalem the first time in 1991 and stood on the Mount of Olives, a master teacher came to me. He said, do you understand who the Holy Ghost is? And I said, yeah, he's the power of God. He said, he's the mind of God. He said, the Holy Ghost is divine intellect. Amen. Amen. And it's a spirit. And he says, and when you have the Holy Ghost... He will show you things to come, according to the Bible. He'll show you, amen, he'll, he'll show you your future. And you, all you got to do is speak it. What do you want? What are you seeking? Think it and say it. And, and be reminded by me that your thoughts take on power. When Ambassador Joe Thomas said, helping hands, restoration, amen. I said, helping hand. I saw it. I sent her a picture. She said, that's awesome. And when you go there and look at helpinghandsrestoration.com and look at what God is doing, and I say it's not just for Jackson, Mississippi. It's for the whole world because we're going to have to feed the hungry. We're going to have to clothe the naked. We're going to have to build houses and shelter the homeless. I'm telling you, it's coming to that. Because don't nobody care. Don't nobody care but God. He cares for thee. Amen. So think on the things that are true. The truth is, amen, Proverbs 16 and verse number 9. A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life, but the Lord directs his steps. And establishes them. The Lord. Amen. He is Lord over my thoughts. He is Lord over your plans. He is Lord over your life. Good God Almighty. And there's no way that we can fail in 2020. The year that is called the turning point. The year that is called the end of an age. I'm telling you, there is a major change coming. Amen. And when you look at the news and they start talking about, well, by uh, the end of December, the 1st of January, there are going to be 415,000 deaths. I say, hey, I'm not buying that. Not for the righteous. Amen, amen. Not for the kingdom of God family. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no. You and I, God revealed to me that in the time of chaos, we shall live a life of no limits. Oh, God, my God. Amen and amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. You talk about what would Jesus do? No, what would Jesus think? Amen. I, I want to think like Christ. Amen. But I must have the spirit of Christ 
according to the book of Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 9. But you are not in the flesh. No, forget that. You're not. No, you are a spiritual being having an earthly experience and you have the spirit of God dwelling within you and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's time for you to become the entrepreneur. It's time for you to become the boss. It's time for you to become the head. The Bible says you are the head and you are not the tail. You are above and you're not beneath. Good God Almighty. You need to read it. That's truth. In Romans chapter 4 and verse number 8 said, Believers, think on the things that are true. A good God. Amen. I am excited. I am so excited. What has happened? is that the God of this world and the institutions and the institutions of this world and even the theological, many of the theological institutions of this world is teaching a thing that blinds even church folks. Amen. I was talking with um, Sandy Rose, that great woman um, in Detroit, WCTV, radio in Detroit while she was interviewing me. We were talking, you know, and she was making it known that God even shut down the church. Come on. God shut down the church. God shut down the schools. Come on. He permitted it. Amen. The things that he is not totally satisfied with, he has shut it down. And that's why I want to do those things that always pleases God. And you want to do those things that always pleases God. And if we do the things that always pleases God, the Bible says we would lack nothing. It told us, it told us in times of disaster, we will not wither. In Psalms 37 and verse number 19, in times of disaster, he said, they will not wither in the days of famine. They will enjoy plenty. In hard times, they will hold their heads up high. And when the shelves are bare, he said, they will be full. Beloved, we're living in the greatest day of human existence in the midst of a disaster in the midst of famine, God says, I'm going to bless you. God says, I'm going to show the world that I am God. Because I'm going to bless you in the midst of it all. Amen. I can't, I can't help but think about, you know, Helping Hands Restoration that started, you know, uh, years before all of this happened. She, and I talked with Ambassador Thomas yesterday, and she told me I could hear that the, that the uh, Restored Center, they call it the Restored Center, and there's an area that's called the Restored Center in that Helping Hand. It was packed full. People want clothes. People want shoes. People want food. You know, people want water. I'm telling you, we're on to something that is happening at this time. You know, we had... We had after I met with Bishop Jakes last July, we came back in August and decided that we're going to put the church up for sale because God had a greater ministry than just a local church for us. This is way before there was a coronavirus. We even went to uh, New York City and we did a, I did an interview for BBC UK. Amen. They came all the way from the United Kingdom and I did the interview. I did it with um, Millie Jackson and the OJs, and, and that's coming out on September the 18th, I believe, on BBC. It'll soon be on YouTube. You'll get to see it, where I'm being interviewed for an hour. Amen. But we were, the, but the interview was held in Chinatown. We find out that we were there in December. Amen. But we were taking our vitamin B, uh, D3, and the virus was in New York. While we were there and we were in Chinatown. But we stand on the truth and we do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. And when you do those things that are pleasing in God's sight, God gives his angels charge over you to keep you in every way. 
I'm telling you, it's about the power of an idea. Yes, it is. It's the power of an idea. Amen. And the God of this world has blinded the mind. Watch this. In second, I'm sorry, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse number 4, it says, in whom the God of this world. Amen. I mean, he's a God of education. He's a God of religion. He's a God of politics. He's a God of economics. He has, he, look, he has, uh, come on, Satan I'm talking about. He has built his own little kingdom. And that's why the Bible says that the kingdoms of this world are to become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. Some of y'all can't get that, but I got it. I got it in my mind. I speak it. I know that it's happening. I'm living a kingdom life. My wife is living a kingdom life. Our children are living the kingdom life. Our, our, our ambassadors are living the kingdom life. Our members are living the kingdom life. The people that follow what we teach are living the kingdom life. And they lack nothing. I just hate to put it like that. But I'm glad to be able to tell you. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds. The God has blinded the mind so you can't think of them. They don't believe. They don't believe not. There are people that don't believe that there is a, a COVID-19. I don't believe in that. I heard a man yesterday. I don't believe in that. If I got to die, I got to die anyway. Hey Amen. Well, go ahead. You want to die? Go ahead and die. I'm not wearing no mask. Go ahead. Don't wear no mask then. That's your business. You know, but I'm going to wear mine. Hey Amen. Hey I'm not going to practice social distancing. I am. And the people who have the intellect of God... Well, amen. And can have and have a spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is the intellect of God, the divine mind of God. He leads us and guides us in all truth. Is in the Bible if you ain't tore the page out. In John chapter number 16 and verse number 13. How be it when he come? The spirit of truth. Then wrong then then Philippians 4 and 8 said, think on these things, those things that are true. He said, when he come. He said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He must be intellect if he's going to guide you. He must be a master guide if he's going to guide you. Come on. How does he guide you? He speaks to your mind. Amen. And he guides you, my God. And he will guide you into all truth. Good God am I. He, will, he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Ghost, the divine intellect of God, the Spirit of God, he will show you your future. You speak your future, and your future must come to pass. You, you, you speak your future. Amen. Those dry bones in the desert could not get up until God said, prophesy unto them. And tell them to hear the word of the Lord. Didn't he say that? Amen. He see, look, look. And when they heard the word of God, amen, their minds begin to wake up. Amen. And Ezekiel 37, verse number 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. I, he said, I prophesied. That word prophesied in the Hebrew, he said, I told them what their future looks like. When people can tell you, what your future looks like. It gives you ideas. Good God. And you start to believe it. Amen. And when you start believing, you start saying it. You start thinking it. Oh, my God. And then that what you thought takes on power to bring it to pass. It's called the anointing. It said that the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing in Isaiah chapter number 10 and verse number 27. The yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. And the anointing works because of the way you think. Y'all all right? He says, so I prophesied as God, I prophesied as God command me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great and mighty army unto God. We are an army. We're soldiers fighting the good fight of faith. 
Amen. Understanding the power of an idea. And I want you to go to Restoration, HelpingHandsRestorations.com. And I want you to look at an idea. And I want you to box up a lot of them clothes that you ain't wore in two or three years. And I want you to box them up and send them down to Ambassador Joe Thomas. Amen. I want you to do that. Amen. I'm so excited about what God is doing. I can't help myself. Amen. Those of you who want to call her, she's probably on the line watching. She's probably on Facebook watching right now. You can call her. Box up them clothes. We got naked folks down in Jackson, Mississippi, and in Mississippi. They've had flooding down there. Amen. The Kenora virus is, is heavy down there. And she has opened up her building of Helping Hands Restoration based on an idea. And when she told me the idea, we built the website. And I mean, it is awesome. I had to go back and look at what, what God has done. I want you to call Erico 601. That's Jackson, Mississippi. Erico 601. 559-4307. Amen. Ask for Ambassador Thomas and ask her what you need. All them clothes that you got in the closet that you ain't worn four or five years, box them up, send them to her, and watch God give you a new wardrobe. Repeat the number, please. Erico 601-559-4307. Amen. And let me, let me prophesy to you. As Ezekiel did to the dry bone. Let me show you what's going to happen. You box up them old clothes. You sit them down there. And watch supernaturally. How a brand new wardrobe comes into your closet. I prophesied it. Amen and amen. We're excited. We see the power of an idea. Amen and amen. The video is my pleasure that I did. That, that Sandy Rose built. Without my knowing is now about to take off. The song, the CD that I did uh, three years ago, which I never released. But now, next month, we're going to release the It's My Pleasure CD to go along with the book. Complimentary. Complimentary to go along with the book from gold to glory. Amen. And you'll see how God led me from a child with an idea to one day to become a professional entertainer. I was telling my wife, I made, a, I made a deal with God. I said, Lord, at 18, I said, if you allow me to become a professional entertainer, if you let me go on Soul Train, if you let me do the Midnight Special, the Mike Douglas Show, the Donna Shore Show, and travel around the world, whatever you want me to do after that, Lord, I'll do it. And finally, I did all of that. And more. Did all that. Carnegie Hall, Madison Square Garden. 90,000 to 100,000 in the Los Angeles Coliseum in the Houston Astrodome. I did all of that. And then God said, without me even having a Bible, you're going to preach my word. And now, here I am. Tell them how to pre-order your book. Well, let's pre-order everything. Let's pre-order the book. You're going to get the CD and the book at FromGoldToGlory.com. From Gold to glory.com you're going to get the cd it's my pleasure seven songs that i wrote and produced and performed on you're going to get the cd and the book amen i think it's like 25 dollars. amen you're going to get it all plus shipping plus shipping and handling we're getting ready for something big amen so my wife keep pointing to this book i got a call for this book Reaching for the world, revealing Jesus as the Messiah, even from the Quran. I can point him out in the Quran. And uh, a lot of people have bought this book. Some people have put it up on eBay and selling it for $35, $40. Amen. And it don't, you don't have to do that. Just $20 I'll send. I got, I got about 20 copies left. Amen. Uh, revealing Jesus as the Messiah. From the Quran, I'm telling you. $20 plus shipping and handling. Okay, they heard you did. Amen. But listen, <laughs> the power of an idea. Your ideas, when you are in Christ, when you've been born again, and you begin to see what the kingdom of God is and what it looks like, you say it after you think it. 
Amen. And that thought takes on power to bring back to you what you thought. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he manifests what he thinks. I love teaching the Word of God, and I know that many of you have said you love hearing me teach the Word of God. I am excited about what God is getting ready to do before the end of this month. Before the end of this month, God said you're going to get double for all the trouble you've been through. Amen. The devil owes you an apology. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's going to have to bow down when he see you come, coming back up stronger than you ever been in your life. I want you to go to our website, ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com. ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com. And we want you to sow your seed of faith and let us pray for you. Amen. When they go to ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com, that's where they can order Reaching for the World. Oh, they can order the book. They yes, they can order the book and pay the shipping and handling. I think shipping and handling is three ninety nine, and they can send us the information, their mailing information. We are not handling this. Right. Someone else is handling all of this for us. We cannot handle the sales and you know and the shipping of books. This is handled by someone else. Reaching for the world. I was on TBN with this book and uh, I held it up. And um, you'd be surprised at folks that was ordering it. I mean, talk, I'm talking about actors and, and movie stars. And uh, Paul Krauss Sr. was living at the time and he ended up buying three cases of them, you know. And there were people just buying and sending it out because a lot of mothers had contacted me about their sons going to prison, becoming Muslims. And, uh, and and I, they wanted me to talk to them, but I wrote the book, Reaching for the World, Revealing Jesus as the Messiah from the Quran. I mentioned, it, I mentioned this in my uh, From Gold to Glory book. I mentioned the virgin birth of Jesus. I mentioned the resurrection of Jesus. I mentioned in the Quran that Jesus healed the dead, raised, uh, healed the lepers and raised the dead. And even his resurrection is in there. But they don't teach them that because their minds are being blinded, amen, you know, from the truth. But, hey, I came from there so I can teach it. Amen and amen. So listen, I want you, I gave you a whole lot today. HelpingHandsRestoration.com Take all of that stuff out the closet you are not wearing and let Ambassador Joe Thomas and Ambassador Steve Thomas know I'm sending you a box of stuff. And I'm telling you, those of you that will do this, listen to me. God is going to give you a whole new wardrobe for this season. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. A whole new wardrobe. And I thank God for all of you. Now, we're going to talk about the power of an idea, but I want to combine it with a message called, This is That Time. This is that time. Amen. And I want you to be with, be with us on Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Amen. And um, Central Standard Time. And stay with us. Share the word. Share this message with your friends, with your family. Amen. Send the message around the world. Amen. I got a, uh, a message from Brother Samuel Page over in London, England. I said, when are you coming back to England? I said, well, when I could travel and when God permits me to come back to England. But anyway, I'm in, I'm in England right now on Facebook Live. Amen. So we thank God for all of you. You, you just don't know how blessed we are to be able to tell you the things that we tell you and bring you up. Amen. You can go to the Cash App. Those of you who have Cash App services on your phones and on your computer, dollar sign. SGM 920. Dollar sign. SGM 920. Amen. And to our God son Noah, we love you. We hope to see you at the pumpkin farm real soon. Amen. We're going to the pumpkin farm. Get some of that good old squash. It ain't about seven miles from here. But listen, we love you. Our ambassador 
in um, in Toronto, Canada. We thank God for her posting scriptures and, and trying to follow me, you know, because I'd be coming up with some stuff early on Sunday morning. And then right before we come on, you know, God be giving me some more scriptures. Amen. So I can't teach it all in, in, one, in one moment. We love you. We thank God for you. And your best just got better. God bless you.